And hello everybody, welcome to this next edition of Gymnastics Growth TV. Today I am here talking with Richard Dwyer, who I'll introduce in just a few minutes. And we're gonna be talking all about how you can help your club survive through this current crisis that the, uh, the world is currently experiencing. And of course, it's gonna hit the sporting world and the gymnastics community um, an awful lot too. So we're gonna be talking about that. We're gonna be joined by Richard in just a few minutes. Now, to start with, I'd love it if you can drop in the comment section. Um, just give me an idea. Are you a coach or are you a club owner? Okay, are you a coach or are you a club owner? I'd love to know. Stick that in the comment section. And also, I would love to know exactly where you're from in the world. Um, if you're in the UK, it's currently the afternoon. If you're in the US, it's probably the morning still, I would imagine. Uh, yes, that's right. And if you're in Australia, um, then it's probably just about getting very late in the evening or you're next to tomorrow, but I'd love to know where you're from. So please drop that in the comment section and let me know whether you're a coach or club owner. That would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, we're gonna be joined today by Richard Dwyer. Uh, Richard will be joining us very, very shortly on today's call and he's gonna be bringing a wealth of experience as we discuss this important topic which is at the front of everybody's minds right now. Now, uh, one thing that we need to uh, discuss first of all is who Richard actually is. Why should we be listening to Richard? Well, Richard is a former gymnast, um, a former regional champion actually also a former stuntman, and he's done a lot of TV and film work within the industry. Also, he has been a TEDx speaker, so he's actually spoken on the TEDx, TEDx stage. He's a multiple business owner and an award-winning entrepreneur. So we've got lots that we can glean from him, and specifically within the gymnastics community, he's actually got two kids club companies. One is Flair Gymnastics, and the other one is Kids Impact. So he's got a lot of experience that he's gonna be sharing with you today. And uh, we know very, very fortunate to be um, bringing Richard on um, to do this, to, to contribute to the community, to help as many clubs as possible get through this awful phase that we're all going through at the minute. Now, if you've got any questions at any time, please drop it in the comments section and we will get round to answering those as soon as possible. But next, let's get on to uh, introducing ourselves or seeing, meeting Richard himself. Let's bring him over. Here he is. And Richard today is going to be sharing his five-point plan and using the, uh, the strategy that he's actually implementing alongside his teams um, for his um, two kids club businesses that he does have. So Richard, welcome to the broadcast today. Thanks for having me, Nick. Hello, everybody who is watching. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much for being here. Much appreciated. I know you are a very, very busy guy, um, but it's great that you've made some time to see everybody today um, on this live stream. I'm just checking the comments here. Um, mm -hmm. Now, as you were listening yourself, you'll know that I asked for everyone to say if they're a club owner or if they're a coach and where they are from in the world. So we've got a um, couple of club owners here. Some people saying both, of course. Uh, great. Business owners and senior coaches. Coaching yep. club director, we've got people in Northern Ireland, UK, Wales, Chelmsford, Suffolk, Portugal, Leeds area. So we've got, um, yeah, a nice spread. Um, Good. And yeah, Nicola, unfortunately, yeah, there does seem to be a bit of a lag, Nicola, on the words to pictures. Apologies for that. Um, we will just have to manage that as we go through. So unfortunately, that is how it might end up being for this, this live stream. Richard, how are things for you? Nick. How are things for you at the moment? Yeah, interesting, Nick. Um, I want to. Uh, it's good that you've asked if we've got club owners versus coaches in in the in the in the group because this is shooted. You know, this is directed mainly to club owners, but it's very relevant to coaches in terms of what we're doing as a company. But yeah, things that things are crazy. It's uh, we've not faced something like this in in our time, and um, yeah, you know, we're having to having to um, keep our ear to the ground for what current information we're getting so that we can uh, adjust our plans accordingly. So as you said, Nick, we want to um, uh, discuss uh, what we've done as a company. I want to share that with your audience and uh, hopefully help people to formulate a plan or adjust their plan or glean things from what we're doing. Now, I am a business kids club owner just like you and um, your uh, your audience and um, I am merely telling you what we're doing now I'm just just a caveat I'm not a legal guru I'm not an HR specialist I'm not a solicitor I'm not an accountant these are things that we're doing um, that we're putting in place that I think might help you as a business owner um, or a director of your company so yeah I wanted to go through that Nick um, 
if we can. Absolutely, yeah, we certainly can. And I know that there'll be uh, a lot of value here for the audience. Um, so thank you very much for being here. So let's get started. Let's start talking about okay. this five-step plan, shall we? Um, and what you're sure. putting in place with some of your companies. Absolutely. Just wanted to add as well, before we dip into each step that we're doing, for people that, you know, you know they're, 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 we're all in this together, is, is to see things as they are, but not worse than they are. I think that's really important to say, because I mean, as a business owner, you have the responsibility and duty to go there into the future and go, right, what if this happens? What if this happens? We have to put those plans in place, but don't live there. Put your plan in place and then come back to the now and the present and work on that plan. So it's seeing things as they are, but not worse they are than they are. It's that you don't, don't try and control things that are out of our control because we don't have control over a lot of this stuff. Um, we also, we don't know what the world's gonna look like on the other side of this. Um, so we've um, planned as a company, worst case scenarios, uh, best case scenarios. And you know we, we've planned for a September reopening. Now, some of you might be like, well, that's a bit that's a bit drastic, isn't it? But not really. If you look at what's been happening in other countries, et cetera, which I'll talk about, you know, as as we as we go through and what I'm sort of gleaning from that, I've been following this really from when it kicked off in China um, and putting my ear to the ground and just looking at what's been happening so that we can learn and we can go, OK, what's been happening there? Um, what's been happening in, in Europe? What's been happening here now in the UK, UK? And then what's happening in the US? Because I know there'll be some people in, in the US here. And I think the US are uh, maybe two weeks behind, but that's staggered throughout the U US because of how big the country is. So I think we can learn from countries that have hit their peak on this that are going before us but you know i'm not a, a an expert on this virus but i'll tell you what we've put in plan just remember that with those thoughts that we're you know when we're putting our plans together your thoughts become your feelings which become your actions so if you are thinking logically and consciously on what you want to do uh, you will turn it into a positive action but if again we're fixating on the the fear factor that's what you will be manifesting so just want pe people to you know get into their conscious mind i think it's really important through these sorts of times of fear because fear can make us very reactive and it's important that we are as consciously thinking as we can through discussions like this through putting plans in place so that we can actually be um uh, get a get a, a handle on that on that fear which which we all suffer from and it all it pops in but remember fear is just you fixating on a future event that may or may not happen and we're planning for that event but i don't want you to live there so we don't want to be doom and gloom but i do want to tell it as it is in terms of what we're doing and and looking at the worst case but you know let, let, let's also realize that we you know the world is still spinning um, our businesses might feel like they're spinning out of control, but the world is still spinning. So let's put it into as much perspective as we can. And I know it's crazy times. I'm reading down my notes because I don't want to miss anything out um, as we go through. So if I pause, I'm just making sure I've covered everything. So I want to give you as much value as possible. Um, so I'm going to walk you through what we've done just, just as a say, company. Richard, Richard I think yeah. I'll just interrupt just from one, one point there. Please. Is obviously, um, we're doing, hopefully we're doing all we can to try and combat um our internal conscious thought, thoughts and fear etc but people are scrolling through social media and looking at the news all the time then obviously they're mm. just feeding their minds with negativity and and fear provoking yeah. thoughts aren't they I mean, this is where it's all coming from the media yeah. a lot of it so it's about um it's about making sure that you're balancing the amount of um or how, how much we digest social media and the news yeah be be informed but don't don't live don't live there in in the news be informed glean the facts it's very difficult to get the facts but glean the facts um <clears throat> look look at what's coming in but just yeah don't live in the news stories i i, I don't watch news we you know i get we, we i go into the bits that, that that are necessary but turn that thing off because the the media is there to sell fear because it sells click throughs it's it's clickbait that's their job is to sell fear unfortunately so they're going to give you the worst case. Um, yeah, completely, Nick, completely agree. So just remember, I'm a business owner just like you are um, listening and watching. And um, this is my current thinking. And the, the, I will respond accordingly to changes that, that, that happened. And I think it's important to say respond rather than react. So I will consciously think about, make the plan and respond accordingly to uh, the changes and in information that come in and but this is our current thinking and this is what we've done so this when this kicked kicked off for me in terms of right this is becoming very real was probably only two weeks ago um i was in um manila in makati 
um, in the Philippines because we have offices there and our service and sales team are based out there uh, for uh, some of my companies and I was doing some recruiting and training with the team and we were in our offices there and we got told well we can't come into the office uh, they're locking down the city and there was a real state of panic and fear in the air and you literally cut the cut the fear in the air with a knife it was it was pretty pretty gloomy and really got me thinking like okay this is feeling very real where we are and stuff is happening and businesses are having to close right this is this is happening all across the globe and we're getting cases you know cropping up in the uk but currently then gyms were open etc so i had to uh, had to put the plan in place so that's when i really started so the first bit of my plan and what we, we we always put in place in times of crisis is secure as the leader secure your own personal safety and income first because without you as the leader um you, you need to be there to execute this plan it's like they say when you're on an airplane put your own oxygen mask on first before helping others you need to be able to be there and be conscious and available as the as the leader and people need certainty in these situations um as a leader you need to be the certain leader that's why certain politicians uh, people follow them because they are a certain leader they are they might not be right but they are certain so um, be there, be present. So look after your own uh, safety first and, and then ring fence your own personal cash. So just little things that I did, for example, I moved anything that was out for uh, tracking the stock market and pulled it out into cash as soon as I could, if I could, with, with personal investments, etc. and ring fence some cash so that I know that if things really hit the fan, I have got this ring fenced uh, personally for me, my family, etc. So that's really important to... Um, Firstly, make sure you can lead and uh, lead, lead the team. So if you don't have cash reserves, etc., look at what your personal um, line of credit is. Uh, are you credit worthy? Can you get a loan? You don't have to use the loan. There's some really low interest rates on loans. You can reach out, get a loan, um, have it there. If you don't need it, great. Pay, just just pay, it, you know, pay, pay back the principal on the loan each month until things are, are looking more rosy. But ring fence your own cash. Um, we talk about cash because with the business, cash is king. It's your oxygen. Without it, you will sink. And so we have to talk about the you know, cash flow, but get your own cash flow sorted. First of all, that's really, really vital. Um, the government have done initiatives, for example, that we'll, we'll put the links in. Uh, Nick, Nick's going to put links in on stuff that we're going to talk about, but particularly um, the stuff that's uh, available for businesses currently. But the uh, mortgage uh payment break so you can approach your mortgage provider if you own a property and get a three month mortgage holiday payment holiday it's deferred there'll be interest on it the payments will go up but it, you can defer and, and you need to you need to preserve your own personal cash flow very important um uh, loans on companies we can talk about next which is protect your business cash so cash is king um it's your oxygen um turn off all spending apart from critical business spending and that was the very next thing i did was literally got on the phone to projects that we were working on now when i say non-critical business spending critical critical systems that you need don't turn your phone off don't turn your internet off don't turn your database off um, but do stop equipment orders big projects uh, stop the cleaners coming in because we've had to shut up shop you know so there's there's a lot of uh, non-critical stuff that needs turning off now the big three um uh really are rent loans and staff so we'll talk about that i don't want you to freak out if you're a coach I don't need to think oh he's telling he's telling my, my boss to, to get rid of me not at all there's there's government help there which we'll talk about in terms of uh furloughing you've probably heard that phrase thrown around quite a bit at the moment but turn off all critical spending this is the next thing we did so rent defer your payment to the uh for this quarter you need to be over communicating with your suppliers so landlord if you um, are renting mortgage provider if you are um if you have a mortgage so that's like the the first biggie is like let's let's get rid of that that big cost and you you've got to communicate with your with your landlords uh who, who you're and you, i'm sure you've done that already but again i'm doing it in order of how we've, we've done this and if you haven't put this in plan or in place already then this is hopefully helping you formulate that so um the next one just talk about loans if you've got loans um on on your business then again get in contact with the bank and defer 
payments, a range of payment plan, a deal, something that you can do so that you can actually um, not pay those through this period. And you just want as long a period. If they say, well, how long do you need? Well, you tell me. Um, you, you go as long as they'll let you. Um, there'll be pushback and there'll be pushback from your landlord. The landlord, remember, they're running a business as well as their property. But let's face it, there's not lots of people wanting to rent facilities and buildings right now. So they, they will negotiate. But uh, don't take the first answer. You know, you, you're, you're a business owner. Negotiate. Um, it's really important. So um, uh, have that negotiation. But, but be open and honest. Have these over communicate. I'll keep talking about over communication. I think it's really important at times like this. You'll notice everyone's on social media over communicating with uh, with posts, etc. And it's, 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 it's kind of important right now. Um, so loans we've talked about. OK, so then there's stuff that the government have put in place for us in the UK. You can defer your VAT period. So you need to hit the link that we'll put in the down below and, and, and it will list everything that the government are, are offering. Um, just going on my notes, we've got the VA, VAT deferment. So don't pay your VAT bill if it's uh, currently due. Uh, use that cash in your business right now. It's a deferred payment, just so you know. It's not a... It's not um, a grant. It's a deferred payment. Grant being free money. <laughs> uh, deferment being you, you got to pay it at some point. Um, then there's the C tax, corporation tax, tax on your profits. Um, you can contact and you need to contact HMRC and get a time to pay arrangement set up. Now, I've heard some companies and businesses are able to stretch that over 24 months time to pay. So um, don't again, when you're talking to the agents, be polite, be nice, be kind. They're, they're doing their best. They, the HMRC have put on lots and lots uh, more more staff during this time. So just be really, uh, really thoughtful of them and, and them working through this period. But yeah, be, be nice and polite and uh, negotiate with them. Um, a time to pay arrangement on your corporation tax. Do that on your own personal income as well. Um, your, your personal tax income um, that you would be paying if you're a director you'd be paying tax on your profits from your dividend drawing um, if you are self-employed and your tax bill is due soon because you've got a funny uh, uh, tax tax period then then don't pay it time to pay is the arrangement you want we can also do that on our payroll so anything that you have to pay which is tax negotiate with HMRC they're there to, to do that they've been instructed that they've got to be flexible on this um, then we've got uh, government stuff like there's grants. If you do own or, uh, a, a premises and you're paying business rates, then there is a grant that you can apply for up to 25 grand. The rules are on HMRC's website. I won't sort of dive into the details, but you know maybe that's a conversation for another time. Or if you want to reach out to me afterwards and you want to you know dip into these the detail of stuff, but this is more of a big picture um, picture plan. So yeah, I've talked about not so they're your big criticals, your rent your loans and then we talk about staff etc don't turn off your business critical systems and i believe and we talk about this on point five that marketing is a business critical system at this time we'll talk about that on point five because you might think why would i be marketing in at this time but we'll, we'll, we'll go on to talk about that um you need to know what your runway is with no with little or no cash flow. So that was the next thing we worked out as a business. It's like, how long, if you turn all my cash off, how long can we keep going? You know, what cash have we got in the business that we need for our business critical systems to run? And then we can work, we can work from that. Can we go, okay, we've got one month, two months, three months, four months. How long can we keep going before we 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 um die as a business? So it's really important to do that projection uh, based on all your um, outgoings and once you've turned off all your non-system critical outgoings. So we've got, we talked grants, we talked loans, um, business interruption insurance. So that's like a hot topic as well. Excuse me while I have a sip of water. Business interruption insurance. Now um, check your policies, you probably have already. We have business interruption insurance. It actually specifically says in our policy that we have uh, protection with a viral outbreak. Now, we're putting in a claim. Now, we're not putting, our, we're actually claims going in today. So we were waited till the 1st of April because we want to get a full um, handle on our cash flow coming in um, from customers. We talk about um, cash flow coming in from customers shortly. So um, our claims going in today, 
and I'm not sort of sure if it's going to be honoured by the insurance company. Um, it's 50-50 at the moment because it's written in our policy. However, uh, the government have said, hey, we're going to make sure all these insurance policies pay out. Now, I don't know how they're going to do that because the uh, insurance is an in the insurers will interpret what the government is saying to them in the same way that the banks will. They'll interpret what the government is saying about these loans and then they will, um, you know, have some pushback and some say. Because let's face it, if everybody makes a claim, um, the insurers will uh, go bust and they will be looking to the government for a bailout because that's how it works with insurance companies and banks. So the government, will, they will then say, can you give us a bailout? So uh, I don't know if the policy will pay out. Now, when you make a claim in the UK anyway, um, you'd normally phone in and talk to your broker and the broker would say, no, you don't have a claim there. Or yes, you do have a claim. If they say, no, you don't have a claim there. You want to pursue it again. It's uh, they're, they're protecting their business interest uh, here, unfortunately, um, and sometimes aren't necessarily on the side of the uh, business, which uh, I don't know. Funny thing, insurance. So it's important that you then put a written claim in. If that comes back rejected, you equally need to um, appeal that so don't don't take no uh, put the claim in um, if you have business interruption insurance and and uh, pursue it now I only learned this one um, yesterday I was on um, a I think it was yesterday a big shout out to Jeff Mexica at kids first who did an amazing amazing webcast yesterday uh, mainly aimed at the American gym owners with the different things that the government have, have in place but going through a lot a lot of these points um, pretty much all these points actually um, now Jeff uh, mentioned about insurance and in the US you can sue your insurer um, I'm sure you can in the UK I've just never thought that route so um, we'll be looking into that as well if uh, insurance uh, comes back and says no so there are options there just wanted to circle back very uh, quickly back on to um, yeah the business back loans so the government has said we will um, back these loans. Uh, you can go to your bank and we will back these loans. Um, and and unfortunately, the bank are interpreting the loans in their own language because that's what banks do. We've contacted our bank. We have an application in process at the moment so that we've got some more cash in the business should we need it. Now, um, the banks aren't being very friendly, uh, at least the ones we've spoken to and uh, our personal bank that we bank with is Barclays. Um, and the interest rates are very high, even though we've been told they won't be. And they are asking for a, you know, uh, there's going to be a debenture on your business or there'll be a, a personal guarantor. So you could, you know, lose your business if you don't repay, lose your house if you don't repay. So they're not as straightforward as, as you'd, you'd like to think, but still put in for them, you know, uh, and, and, and get the cash and have those conversations with your bank. Um, business support team, etc. Et and and if you're, you know, if you're getting resistance again, just, just be polite. Have you know, we're all human. Have have a polite conversation. And um, I remember the, the the guys that are in front line of the banks aren't the ones making the decisions. You know, so so that, that they will be able to escalate things for you. So yeah, just a bit on loans. So that's my point too on business protection of cash flow. And it's the it's the biggie. We can if there's questions popping in. I don't know if there, there are Nick currently, but we could um, yeah, answer we can any ask, questions on that section. We can do a question quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Now, we've, we've had a couple come in regarding what furloughed staff are, are allowed and not allowed to do. I just want to reiterate here that Richard is not coming from a legal perspective. He's not coming from a yeah. HMRC perspective. He is a gym club owner. Um, sharing his perspective so it would not be um, it wouldn't be right for us to be sharing advice based on what furloughed staff would be able to do and I'm sure Richard would echo yeah. echo this the best thing to do is just to um, you know get in contact with the usual government channels to find that sort of information out um, another question that we have had though which is something forefront of Richard's mind at the minute uh, this is from Dan. Thank you, Dan. Um, what are your tips for maintaining engagement and income throughout the period of closures? So obviously we, we talk about the topic of cash here. So how can yeah. you continue to generate some cash whilst the club is closed? Both great questions. Let me talk about cash flow in a, on point, I think point four, yeah, point four, point five cash flow. For, uh, so generate cash from, okay. from uh, members because because that's on my point, my list. Furloughing, though, I will I will talk about furloughing. And again, I'll, I'll reiterate what Nick said. I, I'm not an HR specialist. I've been in business 22 years, so 
I'm an informed business owner, which you need to be. You need to be informed on these subjects and, you know, speak to people that are, are legal and know this stuff. Now, I had a conversation with our accountant. Now, that's what you need to speak to about furloughing in the first place. My accountant reminded me that he's not an HR specialist or a solicitor. So, again, he, he told me that he's not either, but um, he's very informed on what furloughing is, um, what it means and what we need to do. So that's, your ne that's the next bit we'll talk about in terms of, Point three, over communicate with staff. So that's it. I can't stress that enough. The very first thing I did uh, once I'd ring fenced my personal cash flow, looked at the business uh, protection with cash and, and surviving was put my plan in place and then communicate it with my staff. So we, I put a video out straight away onto our staff, social media group, private group and to our WhatsApp group and said, you need to watch my video, put it straight out to the staff. The staff were so thankful that I was communicating in such a way from a, a very early stage. So they were kept in the loop. I was doing a video probably every day um, with bullet point notes and a video. So over communicate with your staff. Our staff are the most important part of our business. With the, A business is just a collection of people. Without our people, we have no business. A staff must come first and before the customer. Now, that might sound a bit sort of counterintuitive to the, uh, or contradictory to what I've said about we must preserve cash flow in the business and uh, that, that one of those is the staffing costs. So let's talk about furlough. What does furlough mean? So this, I've learned lots about furloughing recently. I'm sure lots of you have too. I'm not an expert, but I had a great conversation with our accountant and furloughing in a nutshell means that you can pause staff without making them redundant. So you furlough them, the government will pay 80% of their regular income to you, um, but they're not allowed to work for the company. So that's the rule. But the you will put them through on payroll as normal, and the go and you will have to claim back from the government, we'll talk about it in a second, claim back 80% of what they would have regularly been paid. You can top up the 20% if you want to. Um, we're not. So, you know, um, we've had that conversation with our staff um, talking about making sure you're protecting cash. Um, but we are furloughing the vast majority of our staff. It does mean that they can't work in the business during that period. Um, they can't contribute to any um, business activities. They can't respond to an email that you send them. There are rules and laws in place. They have to sign a agreement to this and you have to have to present the furloughing to them and they sign an agreement and send it back to you. And I'm looking at my accountant's notes to make sure I sort of can hit everything on that. But I had this conversation with our accountant in detail yesterday, uh, I think one o'clock, formulated our furloughing plan. At 2.30, I went live on a Zoom with our staff. And that's what I mean by over communication. It's like, right, everyone jump on the Zoom. We had two thirds of the team were on, um, put our Zoom on and we had a good hour checking in with everybody, how is everybody, let's talk about what's going on and let's talk about furloughing. Now, the portal to claim the furloughing isn't even set up yet or wasn't yesterday when I spoke to my accountant. So um, we have no clue how this is gonna work, um, but my accountant sent me um, this form with, there's lots of details that you've got to put into this form and you've got to work out the average, if you've got uh, shift workers or zero hour agreement uh, staff, you've got to work out averages or you look at this time last month and the higher of the two you can put in in terms of their amount now i'm not especially speak to your accountant about the details but um if there's questions and i can answer them then then then, then, then please ask away so we are following our staff i just want to check any notes on here that we specifically went through or questions that came up with the staff see if they've got a second job as lots of our staff are part-time and have a second job, they can continue with that second job and they can even be furloughed from that second job as well. This is to protect staff so that you don't have to uh, make them redundant. Um, and then they can come back into the business when your business is ready to bring them back in to the company. So furloughing staff is quite sensible. Now you can unfurlough them and bring them back into the business to work. The minimum period is three weeks for them to be furloughed before you can do that. So there is, you, there is some, element of flexibility in there. Now, if your staff member has between uh, you closing the doors um, and then being furloughed, 
have they gone off and got another job? So I know lots of staff have gone off uh, in, in various gyms that I've spoken to, have gone off in there uh, quite rightly to, to protect their own income, have gone um, and they're working in the supermarkets, on the checkouts, on the tills, on the shelves um, to get a second job. Unfortunately, you cannot then furlough them. Crazy, right? But you you, 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 you can't because they've then got a, a second job. So that was my conversation with my accountant. That's just information from my accountant about that. So they have to, um, if they're in a second job, if they increase their hours in the second job, you have to unfurlow them. That was another understanding that I got from the accountant. So again, I'm not an accountant. I'm not an HR specialist. This is just information that I have had through my accountants. So hopefully that's useful. Check the government link. There's a whole section on it and then have the conversation with accountant, bookkeeper, uh, HR person, etc. Is that useful, Nick? Is that, that sort of covered that, that question in, in a way? Um, I think it's very useful, Richard. And I've got a couple more questions that we're going to get to okay. in just a second. OK, but I'm um, just going to take a, a short break just for a minute to just explain what the Gymnastics Growth Academy is for the audience. Are you keeping a watchful eye on your athletes adaptations? This is a program that your athletes will perform every single training day and is used to develop their level of baseline conditioning. We want the shoulders to be open. That's it, very good. The body nice and long, that's good. We're trying to isolate the top of the back, build the pyramid of preparation. The higher the skill level, the more unstable the tower or the athlete will become. I'm giving you the recipe, you just need to choose the ingredients. That might be an element, it might be a routine. From here, find your chest. This is connection drill. We want the athlete to have a really balanced push and pull ratio. And we are live. Welcome to the Gymnastics Growth Academy live broadcast. Be the best version of you because that's all you can control. Cast to handstand, upper body weight transfer, 8 and 15 repetitions. He's sickling in this foot. Make sure that's clean and classy. 9 and rest, good. So our job as coaches is to ensure the athlete fulfills their long-term potential. Anything is learnable and that's what this academy is about. Just commit to being the best version of yourself possible. Until next time, raise your standards. So there, that was the Gymnastics Growth Academy, my brand new membership and mentorship program, which is currently being reached to uh, coaches in 14 countries. So you can check that out at gymnasticsgrowth.com to find out more information. Now we're back with Richard, and thank you very much, guys, for some fantastic questions that are coming in. So Richard, should we, should we just tackle some of these questions that um, yeah. some of the viewers are coming up with? And actually, there's, there's some really good ones here. Um, Helen's asked, um, they are a CASC, which I believe is a community amateur sports club, is that right? Or something similar right. to that? Um, um, how right. can they apply for a grant when they don't actually know how much money they need because they don't know how long this is all going to go on for? What's your thoughts around that? Okay, so whether you're a whatever structure you are, you need cash in your let's call it a business, whether it's a charity or a community amateur sports club, etc. You still need cash. Cash is king. We need cash. So um, I mentioned it before. So you know what you need to know what your business critical operating expenses are so that you can continue to operate the things that need to run during this period so um then you can work out what how much cash is in the business currently and therefore what your runway will be how many months can you survive now you may have cash coming in still from customers because and we'll talk about that next because uh you've done a deal with your customer base you've done them some, you've offered them lots of value through this period to pay something and i'm hoping you've all done that uh, but we'll we'll talk about uh, talk talk about what we've done and, and what, what you can do. So <clears throat> it's very difficult. Our payments came in. Uh, our payment cycle for our customer base is the first of each month. So that's why we were holding off for our insurance claim, just so we had we could see right who's cancelled their auto pay, who's closed things down, and and isn't paying. So it's, if you're you might be charging customers terminally. Uh, in the UK, that's quite quite normal, but uh, monthly is 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 the smart way, um, and that's that that's what uh, lots of businesses uh, and organisations are doing. So you'll know what your cash is um, between now and the next few days of clearing um, that's coming into your into your organisation. So you should have, I'm guessing, you have an accountant um, or a bookkeeper at least. Um, 
these would be conversations that you need to have with them to, to understand how much cash is in the company at the moment, um, how much cash has come in this month, and what's our business critical um, uh, expenses that we have to make to keep things going to suppliers that we have to keep paying, such as your internet, your database. Um, uh, if you've not negotiated a deferment period on your rent, there may be a reduced rent that you've got to pay, etc. If you're keeping staff on, that's going to be your biggest cost. Now, we we have got some of our, our team that haven't been furloughed, so that will be another one of your big costs. So you need to you need to get a handle on those costs. Just get if, if you've not got this stuff because it just doesn't happen in the way that you, you run things. Get a spreadsheet and list everything down. Just write out every single expense. Get your bank statement over here, a spreadsheet over here, and literally go through line item by line item. What do we pay out every month? Let's put it into the spreadsheet and then let's cross through what don't we need to pay out now and stop the payments, stop anything going out. Um, and then let's look at what's coming into the bank account. That will help you see what's coming in and what's going out in its ba most basic format. But hopefully you've got a bookkeeper. If, if not, that, that's cool. If you're a smaller, smaller sort of run organization, then you're doing this stuff and it's not maybe not your niche. That would be my advice. Literally, bank statement, spreadsheet, what's going out, what's coming in. That will allow you to see what you need to keep going. We don't know how long it will go on for. This is why we've done... Uh, plans for right okay if this goes on a month what do we do if this goes on two months and we can go back just remember the world isn't going to look the same the other side of this now I'm not doom and gloom I'm just being realistic and you do need to go there in your head at some point and just go right we don't know what this is going to look like um, we are entering into a in, into a, a crash a market crash this is just what happens when businesses shut up shut up shop we can't shy away from that the markets will crash uh, there will be a recession um, now, I'm not speculating, I'm looking at the facts and it's important that we, uh, we see it again, see it as it is, not worse than it is, but the market will recover. We will come out the other side of this, so it will be OK, but you do need to plan. So, yes, plan for what if we can get back to the gym in a month, uh, in two months, in three months. Uh, we've planned all the way through to September currently. Um, again, keeping my ear to the ground, what's my current understanding on the facts? so that we can make informed decisions and choices, and then we can act upon that, being informed and conscious in our choice in our choices. So hopefully that's sort of covered that. There was another question in there, Nick. Did it, yeah. it was, well, it was to do it was about, with you know, how, customer? Um, um, well, the, the specific one from here with, with Helen was about, you know, you're obviously <coughs> planning, you said for a September sort of start now i'll see and this links to another question about are you expecting a phased return to full gymnastics because it might answer um mm. helen's question yeah, a bit more yeah, about yeah. how much how much cash they would need to borrow so if they've got their operational costs and they know what that are yeah yeah, they know yeah they've gone worst case scenario they've got no cash coming in obviously they can calculate how much they might need up to september but let's look we're not going to mm. just turn the tap on again and all of a sudden we've got a stream of gymnasts coming back in and and, uh, and members just turn up in their entirety. Now that might be the case based on certain marketing, which I know that you're going to lead on to, but not mm. all clubs are going to be in that position. So um, what's your thoughts around this about reopening yeah, in um, September? Is that another one of your points later on? Well, borrow as much cash as the bank will give you so that you, you don't have to use it. Remember, this is a these, these are loans and you, you want to you've got to pay them back, too. So um, you are really just um, getting into debt when you're borrowing, but tap into all the government initiatives and the things that you can tap into and reduce all your expenses and borrow as much as you can. Um, you know, lots of companies will go under. And I do want to say if you go under, that's OK. It really is. You, you won't be alone. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world if the business goes under. It really isn't. Plenty of businesses go under, and in, in times like this, this you know it's very it's it stresses a company and your organisation, uh, organisational skills and and capacity to look after and preserve the cash. So if you go under, you go under. It's not the end of the world. Okay, we appear to have lost Richard for the moment. Um, not sure why that is. We're going to try and get Richard back. Let's just see what has happened to Richard's camera right now. So apologies for this, guys. I'm going to just work on seeing where Richard has disappeared off to. Give me one sec. 
Um, if while we're going through this um, moment of disruption, I tell you what, if you could just drop in the comments any further questions that you've got, that would be absolutely ideal. And in fact, I'm just going to play uh, another little video for you to help pass the time. This is on the masterclass recordings, which are now available and are discounted by 50%. The first of six masterclasses. Today is all about bolt and sprint development. Just very excited about the fact that we're all here together. People have a love for bars. I'm going to certainly demonstrate some of the passive and more active ways in which I would prepare something that's in contact with the floor constantly. Keep that hand close. Don't let me see your ears. Bent knees, closed shoulders, okay? Conversations about how you can take some of these ideas, implement it at home and improve the level of your athletes. How can we take young athletes and develop them on a high performance pathway? Jodie's been one of the top coaches in the UK, produced multiple athletes on the GB team. We want open chest, we want long spine so we can create some extra tension on the top half of the hamstring. So the amount of swing that she has coming from the top bar is greater than what she has on the low bar. You're carrying the speed from the round off flick into a take -off. All you're going to do is send that rotation flying. You're going to have no chance at all. A bit higher. Good. It's all in the same family of movement. There's no need to, to jam that hip shut. Do you see how knocking out that vestibular system and the eye focus changes how people balance. Stops it from getting boring. There's nothing worse than the, the, having a predictable program. But couple that with great energy in the gym, great motivation, high standards. All of that together, that's going to have an impact on your athletes. Yeah, yeah. And we are back in the room with Richard. So uh, apologies that Richard dropped yeah, out I there. dropped out then. Yep. Nick. And you're back in the room now, buddy. We have got you back and you are live again. So a bit of a disruption there. Um, can you hear me okay, Richard? Okay. Do you want to give me a thumbs up if I'm still alive, Nick? And I can. And I. Right. You want me to carry on? Yeah. Yes, please. I mate. can't hear. Can you? Yeah. All good. Continue through. Okay. Yes, please. Great. Um, okay. So um, let's go on to talk about over communicating with customers. This is like point four that we spoke about. So over communication with customers is our point four, and it's super super important that we do the same that we did with our actual um, uh, staff regarding over communication. So as soon as we formulated our plan. We got on the phones, we got on our social, and we did a deal for our customers. And I think that's really, really, really important is that you over communicate with the customers and keep them in the loop because that is going to be your cash flow that comes through. Now, we are, you've got to bear in mind here our customers, our parents that are out there, they're in fear state, a lot of them, and uh, are reactive. So we just have to be that certain leader and the way we communicate with our team and the way that they then communicate with our customer base is very, very important. So have scripted responses, have FAQs for the cust uh, customer base so that the customers, um, the, the team know what they're saying to the customer. It's really, really important that, that everybody in your team is on the same page so that they can then over communicate with the customer base. So the first thing we did was put together, I put together a video for our customers. Um, <clears throat> we'll get you a link to that so you can have a look how we communicated and how we're continually communicating with our customer base in terms of what we've been saying. Um, one of your business critical systems is your phones. They're very important. Don't turn your phones off. Make sure you've got your remote working set up so that your phones can still ring and your team can still call out. So we have phoned every single customer and probably hit 80% voicemail as is normal with phone calls, but we've asked them questions to say, how are you? Is there anything we can do? Are you aware of what offer we've put out for you? So we've put it, put together a deal for customers. I know that was one of the questions in terms of the deal. And we've asked customers to pay at a 50% reduced rate, but we are offering them um, a bag of value in return, uh, return for that. And we'll link through to that, I think would be the best way um nick, nick will pop, pop the link in there because i've got um uh, yeah it'd be, be great if you can have a look at that but we can also discuss that in questions if you'd like to hear more about what we've what we've done for the for the customers um but it it, it does uh, ultimately mean that we've asked for them to continue to pay if they can and we understand if they can't and we've reduced the rate and we've offered in um makeup classes when we come back actual double makeup classes going to be hard work but we're going to make it happen we've offered them a place on the next camp we'll talk about camp as well because i don't think uh 
schools are going to have a summer holiday. I'm not, uh, well, okay, I'm speculating a little bit, but I'm getting prepared um, in terms of if schools go back, are we going to have a summer holiday? Are we going to have summer camps? I think we need to prepare for that. Um, and then we have asked, we've also given them um, a access to our new online platform, which we'll talk about that because I know this, the digital gymnastics space has gone mad recently with lots of people quite rightfully putting gymnastics classes on on online and we talk about like the pivot that we have to make as gym owners in terms of uh, uh reaching our customers in those ways but we're also doing things like we call it lumpy mail so we're sending thank you cards to certain customers that have been really supportive to us so we're sending out thank you cards to say hey thank you so much for your support um if they sent us nice comments we're also doing a wall of uh honor on our website for those that have supported us through this time and customers will be uh, sending us pictures of them and their family and putting that together so these are these are customer communication wins and marketing tips that we're, we're doing to keep our customers keep communicating with them so they know we're still there for them and we will be there when we come out of the other side we've um it's really important when we're looking at um all these things we're doing is that we bear in mind who's the person we're wanting to affect in a positive way here and it's the kids now the kids routine has been thrown upside down and great it's probably novel and fun and exciting at the moment they're at home they're being homeschooled and it's exciting but you know these things leave they leave reminders on our on our subconscious mind it's important us as coaches business owners in the kids club space that we help contribute to a positive mental health with those children so that's first of all getting your own mental health in check and then being able to echo that positivity through um, our communications with the customers so it's being that understanding company that people want to come back to and it's doing the right thing at this time there's people being laid off but there are people that can't afford to continue to pay want to buy in and want to secure their class space to come back into uh, your organization as we come back in 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 and out the other side of this so lumpy mail i talked about other things we're sending out call it lumpy it goes through the post remember lots of people aren't sending mail at the moment and it's a really smart thing to do we're going to be sending out uh, gym books sticker packs um we're doing a virtual online presentation of awards and certificates. We'll be posting certificates and badges and things that have been passed this term, personalized handwritten notes, et cetera, going out to the customers. We do a printed newsletter every every month uh, called Tum Tumble Times. We will be doing our printed newsletter, but we're doing a bigger version because we want to put lots of help stuff in there for the parents. Now, you, you, I'm, I can hear what you're, you're thinking, but you're telling us to preserve cash. Now, I get that. But I'm a, I'm a believer that we shouldn't turn our marketing off. I know some companies are, are turning marketing spend down. I think this is a time, but you need to know how to do it in the right way. We need to be, you need to be very thoughtful. This, so this is where you have to know what your runway is. You have to know what cash is in the business and what, and can you spend on these things? So I'm not saying send stuff out, but if there's inexpensive ways that you can reach the customer, social media is a free way that everyone's on now. And I'm sure you've all seen your social media stack spike recently. People are doing social media, how they should be doing social media, which is posting more than once a day and getting feedback and interacting with the customer base. And hopefully we can carry this on out the other side, because this is what we should be doing with social media. So yeah, that's the, the over communication part with customers. Um, and, and again, uh, from the very beginning, it's as soon as we know, we'll let you know. Um, payments went out today from our customers. And yes, there's a few customers that were calling in and saying, what's going on? You've charged me, even though we've over communicated our process. And we'll put a link uh, in here. Nick's going to put a link in here in terms of what, uh, what, uh, how you can access the, the page that we put out to our customers. Uh, feel free to, 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 to use anything that will work and help you in your business at this time in there. So um, next point. So point five is pivot and plan for growth. So this is um, like our, our, five, our number five on our five points that we we put in, in place. Um, let's talk about digital platform because this is a biggie. Now, as soon as I heard that things were going south, I was, as I said, I was in Makati over in the Philippines and I literally got the last flight out of the airport um, uh, coming back to the UK and all I did throughout that flight, it was two flights. Um, I stopped in Doha and connected, I think it was 24 hours, 28, 28 hours of sort of travel and had some internet on the flight, which was really cool. And I literally formulated a plan on how 
we can help support or how I and my businesses can help support businesses during this time because I know that knew that that was just going to be an outcry of gyms going oh what do I do this is like <laughs> this is crazy so I just put my thinking cap on and first of all I went through the, you know the points on well how can we support our customers and then how can we how can we support business owners as well at the same time so we've literally got five full-time people that have put together amazing in space of two weeks a digital platform we've called it the gymclassroom.com and it's literally a platform where um we've put a gymnastics by two companies uh flair gymnastics and kids impact kids impact is a strength and conditioning uh, company uh we we license into gyms um across across the uk uh our strength and conditioning programs and it affects thousands of children each week our, our, our classes so we put this out for our licensees we put this out to our members it all goes live today and it's an online platform co combination of strength conditioning flexibility um gymnastics classes and we've got some of our team creating content we've got three weeks of content all put together we've got lives going out through there and it's a classroom they can download lesson the lesson structures and they can uh, check off when they've done stuff and done different modules it's a, it's fantastic perhaps so we put that together initially for our members of course we want to give them something to be paying for during this period so it's like what can we do now i know the market's become flooded with everybody jumping on a youtube and doing a workout and doing this and i think that's very admirable it's absolutely brilliant what's blatantly obvious is that we're gymnastics coaches doing this we're not tv presenters we're not joe wicks so there's there's and and that's through no fault of uh, of the industry people are, are, are fighting for survival here in terms of putting um putting programs out there um and we're asking coaches who normally rely upon feedback from a student and a, or a pupil um and they're now looking at a screen like i'm looking now and talking to you and they're talking to um to a screen and they're not a presenter so it's tough and, and we can see that and I don't know how long you guys you know the momentum with the with the there will be a drop-off keep, keep keep keeping things up but keep it up um what I wanted to do and what we we're able to do is offer our platform for free to you to your club to all of your members so that you can use it as part of your retention and rescue package for your club so that's like my gift if you like in terms of in in these times to say please use our resources use our tools that we've put together because we put something together that works and we've tested it with small groups and it goes live to our members today and it i've had i've had over 200 clubs now come to me to want to use the platform and they're getting logged in towards the end of the week so um we put that together so please use it um for free for your members um because it works it's one of those you know those platforms uh, and, and there's no charge it takes the strain of if you having to put all these lessons it's recreational by the way this isn't for squads there's a different route for squads nick will be able to advise you on that uh, this is recreational which is your cash flow of customer base uh, recreational workouts um and, and, and gymnastics stuff in there so it's really important uh, that we cover for those, those clubs. We, we use it um it's a resource a free resource for you um, so yeah, we put this platform together in terms of call that pivoting. We're now becoming a digital media company. Now, I've got five full-time staff working on that, um, putting all the content together and getting it working. So um, we're taking the stress off, off the clubs that are trying to get content out because I know you've got a hundred other things and jobs to do during this time, and you know having to having to sort of learn something brand new is like you know we've had to learn it. Um, we've brought in, you know, expert outside help and we are, you know, learning this. So it's a great platform. So the other thing I wanted to offer business owners specifically um, is my personal support and help. And I'm literally opening my diary up at the end of this week for um, free consults, business consults um, uh, on a Zoom. I've, I've already spoken to gosh, about 15 clubs already in terms of helping and going through your plan, our plan, what we've done, um, what could work for you, and just batting around what we've talked about today. Um, you can, you know, use my time. Now, there's, there's finite time. You know, I'd love to talk to everybody and help everybody, but I'll open my diary and you'll be able to click on the link and book a slot. Please only use that if you need that. 
Um, this isn't for coaches. This is for the business owner. This is for the for the for the business owner or operator or, or director. Uh, Nick's got a ton of resources for coaches and is doing a phenomenal job, Nick. Uh, throughout this time, it's brilliant. All the resources and tools that you've got for coaches. Great time to get your coaching uh, hats on still and learn new stuff in the coaching realm. But this is for business owners, so this is something I want to offer all business owners is access to to me to be able to just go through your plan. So I'm offering offering that out. It's free. Um, I, I consult uh, uh, gyms and small businesses of different sizes. It's something I do do. Uh, it's obviously normally uh, billable at a very high ticket price. That's not what this is about. I want to offer this to you guys so that we can work on this. My, I've said on my website, it's like I will do whatever it takes to help businesses get through this to get in the kids club um, uh, area because ultimately without the kids club, it's the kids that lose out. And with that, that's who we're wanting to affect in a positive way. My mission is building confident kids. I know lots of you are passionate about that in the same way. So let's work on this together. Um, so, yeah, you can you can jump on that now. Um, Nick will put the website below. You just pop your details in, and I'll I'll email you over the information on that, so you can jump on uh, jump on that. Nick, I can't hear you, but through the through the the, the power of uh, sign language, we will be able to uh, can you hear uh, me now? speak now. If there's questions on the list that you want me to have a look at, I will um, I could jump jump on there. But um, okay, mate, you can't hear no. me. No, okay, no problem. Um, so for those of you that can hear me... Can your audience hear you, Nick? I believe they can, yes. Yeah, they can, okay. <laughs> so um, unfortunately, Richard can't hear me, but it's it's all good. I've... Awesome, there we go. Uh, let me just come back to that there. I will mute Richard. That will make it a little bit easier for me to continue to talk to you guys. Let's see the best way of me doing that. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, mate. Cool. Well, that's good. Um, so, Richard, well, I'll come back to you then, which is somewhere over here. Yeah, thanks, mate. I mean, you're prevent, um, providing an awful lot of value here. So thank you so much. Not only um, offering the, the calls, of course, the free consultations, but just doing this, just doing what you're doing now and making... Um, time to go over this that is absolutely fantastic um i've put the uh url kidsclubsupport.com is a a pinned comment in this thread so everyone should be able to see that very visibly um so i encourage everybody to jump on there and to take a look at that um also so thank you very much much appreciated in there we i mean we've 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 been to been talking on our five point plan but yeah make use of of the resources that we've put together you can also link through from uh that page to our parent page so you can see everything that we've put together for our customer base in terms of a package to help bring cash flow into the business during this time um you know j jump on there it's uh and and, and have a look are there questions that have come in nick because i can hear you now I and mean, if we if we want to hit uh, yeah, there's a bit of discussion going around of people just talking about the do's and don'ts. But I think the, an interesting comment actually from Casey. Um, Casey had said, do you have independent contractors in the UK? We've set up another company to hire them for project work and pay them when the project is complete. It's a little creative, but I'm more interested in the consequences of the rules than the rules themselves. Oh, okay. You mean in terms of furloughing? I'm guessing I'm furloughing staff. I'm yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's I'm. That's I'm. Good. I'm not going to go there because yeah. I'm not a solicitor. Um, speak to a leg. Speak to a legal. You know, it's the with. You know, I'm a business owner. Um, speak to a legal. There is various creative stuff that we're doing as well. Um, uh, but but I'm not. I'm I'm not a legal, and I've spoken to legal. Uh, about the things that we are doing. But yes, be creative. This is a time to be creative. Uh, stay above the law you know do, do not break the law in any way um uh, the, the the government are putting things in place to help and support so follow the rules because then you won't get penalized and things won't come back to bite you um and and, and speak to a legal you know there are your insurance probably has on it a legal helpline um that you can call for free uh, most insurances have that uh, if you're through an ngb or you're through an independent uh, that most have this this helpline so chat to your free uh legal and and lots of solicitors will be like i've just said free consult on business stuff lots of solicitors will be throwing this out jump in legal groups and find some solicitors that are offering free stuff and consults as well because 
you know, we, I, 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 I can't, I can't really go there or comment on that. It's not, it's not my area of uh, expertise. But I, I think that's brilliant that you're thinking creatively. That's just absolutely fantastic. Um, one. Th- and, sorry, can I just, can I just continue on that? Just for people that are listening yeah, and watching that don't get it. So, the sorry, who was the guy that put that comment? The gentleman that Casey, put that comment. Casey. Sorry, Casey. Casey. Um, so Casey's point really is when you furlough a staff member, they can't work in your business. So it's, you know, it's like catch 22. You need people to be doing stuff in the business still, uh, but they're not allowed to. So that was Casey's. Um, that was that was where Casey was coming from. Um, I think if I if I'm wrong, then put it in the put it in the comments. Great. Next question, Nick. Yeah, I think that was what Casey was thinking about. Maybe like a little bit of a trick to keep them working while they're being furloughed, perhaps. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we'll, move, we'll move on from that one. Yeah. We'll move on from that one. Um, okay. Nika, uh, I'm feeling I don't want to charge my clients. Am I wrong? I'm trying to create goodwill. I know half can afford and half cannot. Um, <clears throat> oh, so half can afford to support the business. I think you've answered your own question, but... Um, You've got to do whatever it takes to keep your business afloat. Now, I get that. You want to make sure you're doing the right thing for the customers. You are doing the right, in my opinion, you are doing the right thing by asking for customers to pay. But you've got to offer them something in return. Um, when they come back, you need to make those classes up to them. That's what we're doing. We're giving them double in, that, in actual fact. And we're layering more value in there as well. So, yeah, people, people don't want to pay for nothing. And the service has changed. And it's not as advertised originally. But... That's not really anyone's fault, but you need to be uh, protecting your, you need to get some cash flow in as, uh, and be creative with it. Um, it's got to sit right with you. At the end of the day, it's your business. It's got to be sit right with your values and how you operate as an organization. I can tell you what we've done and what I would do, but that's, that's, that's just what we would do. Um, you know, as a, as a, as a business, uh, business leader, as a, as a creator of companies, um, I, I create a company and I want to keep it alive I, I, and I'll do whatever it, it, it takes within the realm of my values uh, and the, the, the realm of the law and what's right for our staff and for our customers. Um, I think it's right for our customers to ask them to keep the business afloat so that there is a club for them all to come back to at the other end of this and for your staff to all come back to. I think we would be doing them a disservice if our clubs weren't there on the other side of this. Hopefully that helps a bit, but you know, I can't give you the can't give give you the, the definitive what, what what should you do? It's what what would you do? But hopefully that, that gives you some food for thought. Uh, Richard, I think I think this whole conversation has given us food for thought. Um, it's certainly given some ideas. Um, it's a valuable insight into what you're doing with your with your businesses, which I'm, I'm very grateful for. And I'm sure the community are here. We've had some great engagement from everybody. Um, I'm sorry that we can't ask answer specific questions regarding the legalities and what HMRC are doing, but the right place to go is just straight to them. Go to HMRC, go to your legal teams, go to your insurers. They're going to have yeah. far more accurate answers. And guys, these things are changing every single day so it wouldn't be right for us as as business owners as, as gymnastics coaches to be advising on these kind of areas um richard i think that pretty much sums up most of the questions that we've had that have come in that i think are answerable um just want to remind everyone to check out kidsclubsupport.com um, that is an opportunity which is there for business owners. This is not something for gymnastics coaches themselves. So if you are a club owner, uh, maybe you're on, on a committee as well, that might be useful for you to check out that link, kidsclubsupport.com, because Richard is here pledging his support and it is complimentary. That's not something that is, is always available, but through his goodwill, he's wanting to help <laughs> the community out and he's got a lot of experience to do so, as I'm sure that you can um, that you can pick up on, on this call. Richard, I want to thank yeah. you. Have you got something else you want to say? You look like you got, you're ready to say just something gonna, else. I'm just sorry. No, you know fine. me so well, Nick. Um, I, I, I've got finite time on those Zooms. I just want to uh, apologise in advance if, if you don't get one of those Zoom calls. I've just got finite time, but I'm, you know, it's out there. What I'm also putting together is, the, is a Facebook group for business owners, not for coaches. Again, business owners. So the face, put your details in on that site. And you'll be able to jump onto our Facebook community, which I think is really, really, really vital in this time that we have a, uh, a UK business owner community. Worldwide, you're welcome to jump on this as well. But I would recommend you jump onto Jeff Metzger at Kids First, onto his Facebook group. If you're a USA gym 
fantastic resource. Thank you, Jeff, for putting that together. Thank you for doing the uh, the, the uh, webinar yesterday. Nick, I want to thank you for everything you're doing in the gymnastics community, especially during this time. You have launched a new business during this crazy mm -hmm. period, which was, is very brave. But but Nick, thank you for everything you continue to do uh, for the gymnastics community and, and putting these sorts of broadcasts broadcast together all the tools and resources all the free support and everything you pour into it i know you put your heart and soul into everything you do so thank you so much nick really appreciate it thank you i appreciate that appreciate those kind words um and it's just absolutely great to have you on today's call and to provide so much value so richard again once uh, one final thank you to you and i'm getting some uh, some comments here cool about saying how grateful other people are as well for the information that you've provided today. Oh, so, welcome, so welcome. Much appreciated, I hope, I hope it was useful. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And cool. guys, don't forget to check out kidsclubsupport.com where Richard will be able to, to uh, hopefully guide you and help you in, in certain areas. Um, thank you to everybody that has been on today's call. Um, as, as has been the case for the last couple of days. We've had a few sort of few technical issues and things going on. I'll be honest with you, this live streaming thing is something that I'm figuring out as I go along. Um, my own team I'm not able to have with me due to for the same exact same reasons as why you are. So I'm kind of juggling a job of three people here and um, hope the, the viewing experience hasn't been too poor for you, but we're going to continue to evaluate it, continue to reflect and continue to improve on the uh, delivery of these sessions. Um, hopefully in time for tomorrow, which is going to be uh, with Katie Richards, a leading sports psychologist within the world of gymnastics. And we're going to be here back on this Facebook page live at... 10 o'clock. So I hope to see as many of you there as possible where Katie's going to be exploring some different ideas and mental tools that, that might be able to help your gymnasts and perhaps yourself as well go through this period. Okay, so thank you everybody for joining. Thanks for viewing and I hope to see many of you um, on tomorrow's call. If I don't or if I do, I just wish you the very best of luck whilst you uh, navigate through this period. We're here to support you as much as possible. The community's got to stay together and